A year after reclaiming their independence, the three Baltic states, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, bask in universal recognition at the Olympic Games. Estonia, Latvia and here now, Lithuania. Three Balkan states back in the Games the last we've seen. Well, not quite. The Balkans are at the other end of Europe, though it's a common enough mistake. But in spite of the confusion over their geography, the Baltic countries, who last competed as part of the Soviet Union, managed some medals all of their own. Estonia's Erika Salome bringing in a gold for women's cycling. Her joy at this triumph turning only briefly to perplexity at the sight of her country's flag being hoisted upside down. The Baltics paid a high price for their independence. They faced up to Soviet military power unarmed. They may have lost this battle. Last summer, though, the Baltics finally won back their freedom. But when Moscow withdrew, it left a time bomb in the Baltic countries. Vast numbers of Russian troops and Russian settlers remained behind. Stranded by history, despised by their Baltic hosts, relegated from the status of elite workers and soldiers to third-class non-citizens. The Russians are getting angry. And they're still backed by units of the old Red Army, 130,000 of them at last count, and by powerful protectors in the Kremlin. Российское руководство обеспокоено о судьбе россиян, которые проживают на территориях других государств. Их судьба не безразлична России. И то, что сегодня называют людей беженцами, которые вынуждены покидать свое жилье, свою работу, расставаться с людьми, любыми, любимыми э, людьми, расставаться со своими товарищами, это не что иное, как элементарный геноцид против той или другой нации. In its day, the Soviet Union covered one-sixth of the Earth's surface, and the remaining Russian Federation is still enormous, dwarfing the three Baltic states, which it annexed in 1940. The Baltics have been bullied by Moscow for centuries. Last January, it was Lithuania who bore the brunt of the bear's wrath. A music professor, Vaitatus Landsbergis, rallied his people to defend their capital. In the fight for Vilnius, hundreds of Lithuanians were injured, 20 were killed. Tai nebuvo taip pat vien dvasinės ištvermės patikrinimas. Nes sovietai tikėjosi, kad žmonės bėgs, kad parlamentas bėgs, kad Respublikos vanavybė bėgs. Matyti to tikėjosi. Ir tas nepasiteisino. Today, the television tower and the country is back in Lithuanian hands. Those who defended them that night are now national heroes with painful memories. Tos minutės buvo labai ilgos, kai tankas užvažiavo, atsistojo ant mūsų, na, skaudėjo, mes šaukėm, bet čia ir nenorėčiau niekam, nelinkėčiau, kad kam nors taip atsitiktų. Keršto niekam neturiu. Tik norėčiau sutikti tą tankistą ir paklausti, kodėl taip jis padarė. Lūpose, lūpomis kuždėjo žodžius. Marija, Marija, išgelbėk Lietuvą, Lietuvą tavo žemė. Marija, Marija, išgelbėk Lietuvą, Lietuvą tavo žemė. Tačiau 
o visų kraupių įvykių. Supratau, kai užėmė bokštą, kad pareigos netlikom. Bokštą užėmė. But January's massacre was followed by August's failed coup in Moscow. Boris Yeltsin conceded Baltic independence. But there was a catch. What really infuriates the Lithuanians, who vividly remember the events of January 13th last year, is that the army responsible for shooting them and crushing them with tanks is still here. It's no longer called the Soviet army, of course. Now it's the Russian army. But for the Lithuanians and for their neighbors in Latvia and Estonia, this is still an army of occupation. More than a year after Baltic independence, there are still about 35,000 Russian troops in Lithuania alone. At this barracks in Vilnius, empty beds tell of some soldiers withdrawn, but more than enough remain to overwhelm the locals, should the order ever be given. Negotiations for troop withdrawal are sporadic and inconclusive. It is, say the Russians, simply a matter of housing. Until new accommodation is found back home, there is nowhere for these soldiers to go. Though there are still hardline voices, officially the army is apologizing for the Vilnius massacre. <laughs> Не было желания такого выходить. Просто люди подчинились приказу. Вот и все. Все было неправильно. С самого начала. Были втянуты просто в политические грязные игры, в которые бросили армию в очередной раз. И в очередной раз облили ее грязью. Lithuania is now raising its own defense force. But after 50 years of marching to the drum of the Red Army, it's not so easy to devise instant traditions of your own. So the Lithuanians have turned to Washington for advice on how to rustle up a bit of pomp and circumstance, American style. Measure exactly all this chalk marks. Yes. So when he goes back to the post, he can yeah. take spray yeah. paint. Yes. And make it permanent. Yeah. 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 The message to Moscow is loud, if not entirely clear. English is, American is, for attention is. Or, or and, and for, for present arms, present mm -hmm. arms, about mm -hmm. is freeze at Okay. Outside Lithuania's parliament, the makeshift barricades hastily erected against Soviet tanks 18 months ago are still here. The president says the defenses will stay until the last Russian soldier leaves. You never know when they'll be needed again. Mes negalime būti saugus, kol mūsų žemėje ir net mūsų sostinėje už dešimties minučių važiavimo nuo parlamento yra svetima kariuomenė su labai didelė puolamaja jėga. Mes negalime jausti saugus, kol panetis Rusijoje yra nestabili, Ir labai garsiai kalba imperinių ketinimų ir mums priešiškų nuotaikų politiniai veikėjai. After 50 years of being force-fed Soviet socialist realism, Lithuanians now play their own tunes while they can.
And this is their grand vision of the future, a Baltics fully integrated with the West via an arterial motorway, the Via Baltica, stretching from Warsaw to Helsinki. That's the dream. This is the frustrating reality. Behind me is the Polish-Lithuanian border, which some of these people have been queuing for up to three days to cross. It's much the same on the Polish side, and each blames the other. So much for the Baltic's window to the west. This is the longest traffic queue in Europe. It's enough to discourage any tourist or potential Western investor. And the border blockage is straining relations between Poland and Lithuania. After the Russians, the Polish minority is Lithuania's biggest problem. Poland accuses Lithuania of discriminating against its Poles. The frontier between Poland and Lithuania has changed with every turn of history. A large portion of southern Lithuania, including Vilnius itself, was part of Poland as recently as 1940, when Polish language and culture reigned supreme. There are still influential voices in Poland who lay claim to Vilnius and its hinterland. And so, encouraged by the KGB, Lithuania's Polish minority mostly opposed Lithuanian independence. But the local KGB headquarters now stand abandoned. The hammer and sickle torn from the wall, the graffiti pointing the way home. Kremlin, 800 kilometers. Czeslaw Okincic admits the Poles have only themselves to blame. Here at St. Dominic's Cathedral, Poles gather to pray for their uncertain future. Fearful not only of retribution by Lithuanian nationalists, but of the economic plight which affects everyone in the country. Lithuania faces a stormy winter. With no energy resources of her own, the country still relies on Russia for fuel. Now Moscow's demanding payment in hard currency. And this is what it comes down to. Richard is a boy who loves bath time, but these days he has to make do with a basin. The communal hot water system's been turned off to save fuel. Some people are starting to mutter. At least life was warmer in the old days. The president blames such doubts on the lingering ill effects of Soviet rule. The Joseph Pavoyus Kuri Kele. Sovietinė santvarka, tai buvo gyvenimo vertybių atėmimas. Dvasinių moralinių vertybių sunaikinimas. Lietuvių tauta išlaikė vertybės savo samonė, savo širdyse, bet nuostolių Mes patyrėme labai daug. Ir dabar tų dvasinių moralinių žaizdų mūsų visuomenį dar turi labai daug.
Another bright new flag, another hastily built border post. Welcome to the Republic of Latvia. The Via Baltica stretches up through Latvia, over typical Baltic countryside, mile upon mile of flat land and forest. All three Baltic countries rely heavily on agriculture, but the legacy of 50 years of Soviet collective farming has left methods somewhat backward. In any case, agriculture can't provide the springboard for Baltic economic recovery. Every country in Europe protects its farming from outside competition. With decollectivization, the farmers are dividing up the land along its pre-war boundaries. After 50 years, this farm in Western Latvia has just been reclaimed by its original owners, the Rosenthals. Good morning. Hi. Janis Rosenthal was born and bred in Eastbourne. Now he's trying to make a go of it in his Latvian ancestral home. It's been OK, a bit dry, but otherwise OK. Yeah. Janis was a bus mechanic in England, and he's not over-impressed with the legacy of Soviet technology over here. So what, uh, what were the main problems with this tractor? Well, basically, it comes as a unit mostly assembled, but nothing's ever tightened up. You've got to go right round, right through the vehicle and tighten every nut and bolt up. I drove this down to the local village, and this wheel basically lost three studs on its way. Uh, about four or five of the nuts were basically coming off and just holding on on their very end threads. If I'd gone much further, the whole wheel would have dropped off. Three generations of the Rosenthal family returned from Britain to Latvia earlier this year. They moved back into their old family home and now look the very picture of the proud pioneers. Helmut Rosenthal was 17 when he fled Latvia. He's been dreaming of returning ever since. We are more or less like the Jews, and they, whenever the new year comes, they say, well, next year in Jerusalem. And so we always say New Year's Eve, next year in Latvia. And of course, there have been times when you didn't have much chance, much hope, really, but um, you got to keep it up, and we have kept it up all the time. No matter how dark things looked and no matter how miserable things were, and there were very miserable years, some of them, but we always looked on the way that we, one day we will return, never any other way. We haven't, em we haven't been immigrants, we've been exiles, and now our exile, thank God, is finished. But in the 50 years Helmut Rosenthal's been away, time has marched on in Latvia. Riga is still a handsome city, but today it's totally dominated by Russians. When Helmut fled, only 8% of the population of Latvia was Russian. Now that's risen to 50%. With the restoration of its independence, Latvia faces a keen moral dilemma. What to do about its Russian population? During 50 years of colonial rule, Moscow sent large numbers of Russian settlers here to ensure that Latvia played its full part in the great union of Soviet socialist republics. And here the Russian settlers remain, stranded by the abrupt collapse of the Soviet empire. And the Russians are growing increasingly vocal. Tatiana Zdanok is a Russian-speaking member of the Latvian Supreme Council. Under the tough new rules, her application for citizenship was rejected because she is not the descendant of someone who was a Latvian citizen in June 1940, when Latvia was last independent. Очень сильные обиды и какого-то безвыходной ситуации. В последнее время политики Латвии э, стали, ища в прецеденты в мировой истории, стали говорить об Алжире и о том известном нам 
периоде, в 50-е годы, когда все французы, проживавшие в течение даже нескольких поколений, вынуждены были покинуть Алжир. Я... Это та судьба, которая, может быть, ждет русских в Прибалтике. Это люди действительно потерянные. But to many Latvians, Russians like Colonel Albert Lebedev were part of a Soviet army of occupation. As chairman of the Veterans Association, he sees the role of the Soviet army rather differently. Russian forces did not come to occupy Latvia. They protected their lives, their blood. Here in the land of Latvia, there are more than 156,000 моих товарищей по оружию, которые полегли за освобождение Латвии от действительного оккупанта, от немецко-фашистских захватчиков. Moscow did create huge industries like this one, the Riga wagon works, which made railway carriages for the whole of the USSR. But most of the workers were brought from Russia, and the components came from 600 different factories all over the Soviet Union. With the end of empire, it's doubtful that huge factories like this can survive. Thousands of Russian workers have already been laid off. And however unpopular they are with Latvians, most call this home. They say we must go home to Russia. We are, of course, Russians, but my ho uh, home is here. My children were born here. But Latvians are losing patience with the Russian cuckoos in their nest. <laughs> Olgertz Zanitis is a member of the Congress of Latvian Citizens and an ardent nationalist. His solution to the Russian problem is simple. Citas iespējas, lai izdzīvotu latviešu tautu, nav, kā vismaz lielākai daļai no viņiem ir jāatgriežās savā etniskajā dzimtenē. Bez šīs atgriešanās mēs nebūsim spējīgi eksistēt, pastāvēt kā, kā nācija, kā tauta. Jo viņu skaits šeit ir pārāk liels vairāk nekā pusi no visiem Latvijā dzīvojošiem. Un nevienai tautai, lai arī cik viņa būtu attīstīta politiski, ekonomiski, nav iespējams integrēt sevi tik lielu svešzemnieku skaitu. Worse than that, the vice president is worried the Russians may even hijack his country. It's a dangerous for our independence because if such this sort of our population, which are non-Latvians and which come in the last years only in Latvia, if they take part in the real new elections, it's possible because they are majority in Latvia uh, to uh, establish such a go such government and such parliament, which vote may be for the new uh, union with Russia or this uh, new union of independent states. The beaches and the gently lapping seas of Latvia were much favored by Soviet officers as a retirement home. Some 90,000 soldiers retired here to the pleasant Bay of Riga. Most lived on generous state pensions in gracious dachas and comfortable apartments along the coast. But last year, they woke up one morning to find themselves in a foreign country, hostile to their presence. Their once privileged position was suddenly overturned. Everywhere there are signs that Latvian nationalism is growing more strident. Everywhere, Russian words have been painted over or torn off. The Russian settlers are being made to feel unwelcome. Now there's a growing danger of a violent backlash in defense of their old position. Jo visus šos pēckara gadus viņi šeit jūtās kā saimnieki, kā kungi. Un tagad šī viņu, šī viņu dominante, dominance tiek, zināmā mērā, apdraudēta. Un tad cilvēki ir cilvēki, viņu iemēr centīsies saglabāt savas agrākās privilēģijas. Un iespējams, ka viņi 
izprovecēs pat šādu bruņotu darbību. Colonel Lebedev is not alone in agitating for a return to the old order. Вот сейчас уже во многих местах, в том числе в магазинах, на транспорте, на работе, где угодно, люди говорят: "Ну хотя бы на год ещё вернулась, значит, старая советская власть и пришли к власти коммунисты, чтобы мы, значит, немножко пожили спокойно". But the Colonel and his Red Army Veterans Association have attracted the attention of the new Latvian Secret Service. He's now under constant surveillance. It's possible for Mr. Lebedev's organization also to start with um, actions with violence, because we know that uh, in the meetings of this organization of retired Soviet officers, they discuss about the possibility to start with uh, violence actions against the Latvian government with using the weapons and we know that uh, they ask the members of this organization to go in the um, Russian military bases and talk with soldiers and officers about such actions. <laughs> Above all the tensions and the plotting, Riga struggles to put on a brave face, harking back to the turn of the century when it rivaled St. Petersburg as a major Baltic trading port. Café society is re-establishing itself after years of communist bleakness. But despite the odd sign of Western interest, foreign investment has been slow to come to Latvia. For the time being, the Russians have managed to keep a firm grip, at least on the cities. But now the battle for Riga has been joined. Encouraged by the new government, Latvian exiles are reclaiming their old properties. Proving title, no problem for the Berg family, now of San Francisco. They inscribed their coat of arms and their initials on their buildings. The Bergs are among hundreds of Inter Sikora's clients. She regards it as her patriotic duty to bring home as many Latvian exiles as she possibly can. Es domāju, ka noteikti šeit ir cīņa par Rīgu, jo Rīgā, kā jūs zināt, pēc savu nacionālā sastāvu ir ļoti krieviski. Un šobrīd ļoti lielas naudas summas ir sakoncentrētas Krievu, pil, pat ne Latvijas pilsoņi, bet Krievu tautības cilvēku rokās. Un šī Krievu ietekma Rīgā ir ļoti jūtama, un tā ir katru brīdi arī palielinās, un šī Krievijas austrumu cilvēki ar naudu cenšas Rīgu nopirkt, Rīgā iespiesties. Tādēļ ļoti būtiski svarīgi ir prasīt savus īpašumus atpakaļ. Another new frontier, another hastily constructed border post. Welcome to Estonia. Estonia is the smallest and in many ways the most romantic of the Baltic nations. Many of its forests still home to wolves and bears. Many of its people still proudly pagan. The Via Baltica winds northwards towards the Gulf of Finland, a journey of some 500 miles in all. It ends at the ancient port city of Tallinn, Estonia's capital. Helsinki is only 50 miles across the sea, and the Finns have much in common with the Estonians. Tallinn's old town, an architectural gem, is shrouded in scaffolding as it undergoes major restoration to overcome 50 years of neglect. 
Restoration is something they've had to do before. These are the scars of the Second World War, when Soviet planes bombed Tallinn, flattening much of the old town. Fifty years later, the defiant Estonians can at last publicly name the culprits. The Russians have much to answer for. Leonard Meri spent his childhood in Siberia thanks to them. Nyt, uh, pitääkin mieles, että venäläiset, kes on praegu Eestissä asuma tunnut, on tunnut pärast teistmaailmasta. Nad on tunnut siia vene sihi pärase poliitika tulemusena, mille eesmärkiks oli eestlaste lõplik välja tõrjumine eestimaalt, keeleliselt, kultuuriliselt, kõnnevalt on poliitiliselt. Ja selleks, et see töötaks teil poolest nagu lihuniku masinavärk, saadeti ju kümneid tuhandid eestlist Siberisse, et sisse tulnud vennastel ruumi teha. Now the Estonians are getting their own back on history. This old submarine, built in 1936 in England, is now, believe it or not, the flagship of the new Estonian Navy. The Russians ran it as a naval museum until Estonian irregulars sneaked in one night and liberated it. Experts have been called in to check out its seaworthiness. It may not be long before it takes to the open seas once more. Estonians are getting their own back in other ways too. Today's D-Day for Igor Topoli. Today he has to pass an exam in Estonian if he's to keep his job. These formidable matrons are his examiners. Russians call them the language police, and today they've come to the largely Russian-staffed Volta factory. The Estonians have gone further than their Baltic neighbours in pushing through tough new language laws. For 50 years, Estonians were forced to speak Russian. Now it's the Russians' turn to learn Estonian. But there's a twist. Estonian is one of the most complicated languages in the world and most Russians can't speak a word of it. Now, in order to keep their jobs, Russians, who make up over 40% of the population, must pass the language exam at the appropriate grade. Lowest grade for a laborer, highest for a psychiatrist. And for the Russians to have even a sporting chance of Estonian citizenship, they must pass the second highest grade and meet a three-year residence requirement. Most Russians won't even bother to try. They see it as a new apartheid. Did you ever expect to have to take an Estonian exam just to be allowed to keep your job? Yes. Do you feel a, a bit humiliated or resentful that you have to now write such an exam in Estonian? Эстонский язык хорошо знаю, я могу без ложной скромности, скромности сказать. И вот мне приходится сдавать экзамены. В соответствии с законом о гражданстве... Vladimir Lebedev has taken the language issue to court. A deputy in the now defunct Estonian Supreme Soviet, he's still the main spokesman for Estonia's Russians. But Lebedev stands little chance of winning his case. Ситуация у нас сейчас такая, что де-факто фактически мы имеем две национальных общины, у которых два языка. Вот это реальность, это де-факто, это реальность сегодняшнего дня. И закон язык, закон о языке это служит орудием для того, чтобы вытеснить отсюда русское население. Estonian nationalists have spoken to us and said there was 50 years of illegal occupation by Russia, of colonial domination, of oppression. Wouldn't you feel the same if you were in their place? Русские работают на всех грязных и тяжелых работах. Русские работают на строительстве, то есть в дождь, в снег, в холод. Русские плавают рыбаками, добывают рыбу для Эстонии. Русские плавают моряками. Русские работают на заводах. 
А, эс, а бедные эстонцы, которых колонизировала Россия, управляют ими. Ведь вы посмотрите, э, с телефонные справочники, все руководство чисто эстонское. Чисто эстонское. A TV debate between the four candidates for Estonia's first free presidential elections for 60 years. All four are on common ground in wanting to protect their nation from being swamped by Russians. All are busy devising schemes to encourage Russian settlers to go home. They range from financial enticements to what amounts to economic discrimination. Russian bashing is a clear vote winner in these elections. Leonard Meri has a love-hate relationship with Russia. One of his claims to fame is that he once made Boris Yeltsin cry. On öelda teile, et meie eestlased vihkame teid. Me vihkame teid sellepärast, et aasta kümneid on Venemaa olnud terrori, antidemokraatia ja miljonite ohvrite sümbol. Dostoevski, Tolstoi, Tchaikovski on Euroopa kultuuri osad. Ja see on see osa Venemaast, mida me armastame koos nende Vene demokraatiliga, kes praegu on oma rinnaga kaitsnud Venema esimest parlamenti ja teid, ära president. Ja ma pean ütlema, et see spontaane jõud, sünnitas ühe haua vaikuse, siis kui ma ütlesin, mis sugust Venemaad me vihkame ja mis sugust me armastame. Ja kui ma lõpetasin, ma nägin pisaraid Jeltsin silmades. Nationalists like Leonard Meri are not popular in the country's second city, Narva, for Narva, whose population is 95% Russian, has been split by independence. Its other half, Ivangorod, over the bridge, is now in Russia. Election day in Estonia, but here in Narva, the polling stations are distinctly underwhelmed because under Estonian law, the majority of the Russian-speaking population has been denied the vote. So, for the next four years at least, they'll have no voice at all in the new Estonian parliament. Мы просто мы понимаем, что с потерей политических прав у нас э, теряется надежда в том, что будут выполняться наши социальные, экономические и другие гарантии, которые необходимы человеку для нормального его существования в жизни и его нормальной деятельности. Given all the resentment against the Russians here, aren't you tempted simply to cross the bridge and go home? Ну, вы знаете, если бы даже такое желание появилось, ну, кто нас ждет на той стороне? Если мы перейдем на ту сторону, значит, мы должны занять чье-то место на работе, чье-то место в новой жилой квартире или не в новой, чье-то, так сказать, жилье и так далее. И оставить здесь, э, так сказать, свое гнездо, свой дом. У кого-то здесь родились дети, у кого-то тут самые близкие друзья и знакомые, у кого у многих сегодня есть предки, которые похоронены в этой земле, и переходя на ту сторону, что мы вынуждены будем и могилы с собой забирать. Increasingly, the Russians of Narva are offering a radical solution to the city's identity crisis. Simply redraw the border to incorporate Narva in Russia. Such proposals only increase the prospect of violence. Понимаете, когда цунами возникает, то в центре обычно тишина, тихо. 
Но потом это все взрывается. Я, вот эта тишина русского населения меня сейчас очень пугает. То есть она может взорваться. И не примите меня за экстремиста, честное слово, я не такой, но кроме владения политических методов, политическими методами борьбы, кроме владения, ну пускай не очень блестящие юриспруденции, законами, я еще все-таки офицер запаса армии, и я, умею влад... и я умею владеть оружием. There are those, especially within the ranks of the Russian army, that open conflict in the Baltics would suit very well, just what the generals ordered. Kõne mures nende 7000 kinderliberast, kes kaotavad praegu Moskvas oma töö ja kes näevad suurt vaeva selleks, et etnilise konflikte esile kutsule, kus võimalik sellepärast, et need kindralid peavad ju tõestama Vene parlamentile ja Vene eelarvele, et raha, mida läänes tuleb, tuleb kõigepealt anda armeele, et armeed vajatakse. In Moscow, men like Vladimir Zhirinovsky, leader of the far-right Liberal Democratic Party, champion the cause of the Baltic Russians. Zhirinovsky got more than six million votes when he stood against Boris Yeltsin for president. And his popularity grows with every Russian humiliation. Я знаю о том, что они сейчас перешли к созданию дружин по защите русских. И следующий этап – это вооружение этих дружин. И вот руководители Эстонии или других регионов Прибалтики сами подталкивают к будущей гражданской войне в этом регионе. И никакие силы не спасут. The Kremlin, too, is growing restive at the treatment of the Baltic Russians threatening economic measures unless the Baltics allow Russians who arrived as occupiers to stay on as citizens. The vice president is growing dangerously impatient. There are other mechanisms that could have been brought to the political leaders of the people who were able to vote even to vote. There are sanctions, economic sanctions. It's the most reasonable sanctions. Because let's look at the economy of Estonia. Can it be possible to exist without sterile resources that are provided from Russia? Я вам могу авторитетно и ответственно ответить – нет. В течение недели вся экономика и вся промышленность Эстонии просто остановится. The graves of those killed by the Soviet army in the battle for Vilnius. Now a shrine to Baltic nationhood. But a year after their hard-won independence, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania edge close to losing it again. To cast out the Russian settlers in their midst is to provoke Moscow's lethal fury. To accept the settlers is, for the Baltic nations, to face death by arithmetic. Mm -hmm.